Well, what is going on guys and welcome to the video. Now we have seen a nice bounce back in the market the past couple of weeks, but we all know there is something lurking out there. And as much as I hate to admit it, a recession is probably coming. However, there is more to it than the media or YouTube or anyone else is going to tell you, so I will give you the truth on all of it and exactly what to do about it. I just ask in exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. And are you against having a team of investors, including me, working directly with you as we navigate these crazy times? If not, then you need to know the March Madness sale ends this weekend to join the Market Insiders private group and prices will never be lower than this again. You get full and direct access to me and a group of six and seven figure investors and you get access to four courses for free that teach you how to plan, do evaluation, build up your cash, and you see my watch list with price targets, my buy and sell alerts, we got live weekly Q&As, exclusive videos, and a ton more, so check out the pinned comment. And before blasting me for promoting it, I have no ads, no sponsors, this is what YouTube pays me in a month, and I give half of that and half the group's proceeds to charity. Now before we can even get started, let me clear up a few things first. I don't care about the yield curve inverting. I don't care about what is going on with inflation. I could really care less what is going on politically. I could care less about what the Fed is doing. Basically, I don't need to care or look at any of those things to know that a recession may be coming. The reason why is simple and here are the facts around it and it may be an angle that's not getting talked about a much, but I'm gonna give it to you anyways. First, all you need to be in a recession is two consecutive quarters of declining GDP. Now, yes, there are other measures and ones that incorporate other data points and they probably are more accurate and a better indicator but the media will use the lowest bar because putting out recession articles and videos gets clicks, that's the bottom line. And with this being an election year here in the US, expect the noise to be at peak levels on both sides. I mean, it's either the economy has never been better, which is not true, or we are heading to the Great Depression part two, which is also not true. But let's look at more facts. GDP growth is at 7% and GDP growth for the past five years prior to the illness crash was in the mid twos. So what does that mean exactly? It means the economy is too hot and this pretty much explains why we have so much inflation. The economy needs to be slowed down to help with inflation and with the bar being so low to technically be in a recession, it is probably going to happen soon as the Fed tries to slow inflation and the economy. But does that mean the recession will be bad? Well, let's dive a little bit deeper. What made the Great Recession so bad was not just that we were seeing declining GDP, but we had negative GDP, meaning growth wasn't just slowing, it was actually going backwards. And here, let me give you a quick example here. It's basically the best one I can think of. Let's say your income went up two years ago by 5%, and then last year you got another 5% bump, but this year you only got a 3% bump. Yeah, that sucks, but it's still going up. But let's say they cut your income by 5% instead of giving you at least a 3% bump. That is a whole different ball game then. And that is what the economy was doing overall back then. Not just slowing growth, you know, going from 5% to that 3%, but actually taking a pay cut per se. Now there is nothing right now pointing towards anything even remotely close to that, you know, basically having negative GDP growth. If anything, we're having the opposite problem as GDP growth is too hot, creating more inflation. And the second piece that we saw during the Great Recession was unemployment peaked out at over 10%, and it took seven years from that point to get it back under 4%. If you were a job hunter at that time, there were no jobs available. I mean, it was just brutal and it was at every level of jobs, you know, basically entry level jobs to executive jobs, basically just the job market sucked overall. Right now we are sitting at 3.8% unemployment and the number continues to track down. And as a matter of fact, the labor market may be tighter than ever at this stage. I mean, if you want a job here in the US, there is one available. Top companies are having to pay huge bonuses to get or retain employees, and heck, companies are voluntarily jacking up wages just to get employees in the door. Basically the polar opposite of what we had during the Great Recession. So although we may have yet another recession, I do not think it will be anything like the Great Recession. There are just too many huge differences between the two for us to even be there, and to be honest, each recession is different. They are not all the same, each one looks completely different. But I get it. What the heck should you do now? I mean, even if it's not so bad, the recession word is a bad word, and if we do have one, isn't that bad for stocks? Well, for overall markets, it generally does not go well for stocks. 
but not every recession has been negative for the market. And on occasion, stocks soar like in 2021, which I agree was a complete anomaly, but it still happened. And I mean, even during the 1981 to 82 recession, the S&P returned slightly positive over that time. And looking at individual stocks, since I don't buy index funds or any of that sort of stuff, a lot of stocks actually thrive during recessions. Apple and Amazon returned to their previous all-time highs before the end of the Great Recession. Stocks like Netflix thrived during that entire time, and the classic old man stocks like Cope obviously thrived during that time as well. It's not like every stock is a loser during a recession or a depression. But here's another fact for you guys. I personally don't care if my stocks are losers in the short term, and as a matter of fact, I love recessions, and let me explain why with a simple exercise with facts. Raise your hand if you wish you had bought shares of Apple at $60, given that it's at $175 today. Anyone? Anyone out there? Okay, well, if that didn't entice you, what about $3 per share? Anyone still? No? What about 30 cents per share? You could have bought Apple at all three of those prices during the past three recessions we had here in the U.S. And if Apple's not your thing, what about Google, who actually started after the tech bubble in the 2001 recession, and that one could be had for around $1,000 during the illness recession just two years ago, and for about $140 during the Great Recession. Those are the prices you could have got, and that stock's approaching $3,000 per share now, and I could do this all day long with many great stocks. Great companies with great management teams that have great balance sheets always thrive over the long run, despite the doom and gloom narrative that persists during these downtimes like we have right now. So for me, I view a recession as a good thing for me as an investor because I can add shares cheaper than I should be able to on great businesses and great stocks. Sure, you may be down in the short term. I mean, we say it all the time, nobody can time the bottom, and I'm the world's worst at timing the bottom. But you just raised your hand saying you wish you could have bought Apple or Google at those prices. And if we get a recession and stocks are further affected to the negative side, you will get opportunities to add to great stocks at great prices. So I'm personally going to continue to do valuations so I can buy great stocks at undervalued prices. I will not worry about timing the market and I don't care if I'm down in the short term. I also will not speculate and I will keep my emotions out of this and I will just execute my plan that I spent a long time building and refining. And if you don't have a plan or know what stocks to consider, click this video right here for nine stocks I've been buying like crazy or click this video right here if you want my exact blueprint to crush this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.